As we perceive this universe with our five physical senses, it's easy to believe that this universe is solid and material. But in reality, this is a vibrational universe, and we are constantly sending out vibrations which the universe picks up and attracts to us events and circumstances to match their vibration. So the question is, how do we know what kind of vibration that we are sending out? Our vibrations is very much uh, in connection with our belief system and most importantly with the way that we feel. So generally speaking, if we are feeling optimistic, joyous, uh, compassionate, peaceful, filled with love, positive expectations in life, we are sending out some high vibrational frequency. In contrast, when we are feeling down, pessimistic, afraid, angry, resented, frustrated, we are sending out some low vibrational frequencies. So there is a, I'm going to actually share with you what uh, the channelings of Abraham Hicks have to say about our vibrations. The universal law never yields to you something that is different from your own vibrational frequency. In other words, if you are immersed in negative feelings and emotions, you cannot expect the universe to bring to you the good things of life. Now, there is a lot of information out there about the law of attraction. So tonight, I would like to focus on two points that could be very helpful into helping you deal with challenges and at the same time be in harmony with the law of attraction. As you probably know, it's very easy to send out some positive vibrations when life is good and everything is going well. However, when we are faced with challenges, when we are faced with difficult situation, it seems that most of us forget everything about the law of attraction and we allow ourselves to go deep into this uh, low vibrational feelings and emotions without realizing that the universe will respond once again by attracting to us more events and circumstances that will match that vibration. So point number one that I'd like to bring to your attention is this. Whatever is taking place in the world outside of you is the result or the effect of your belief system. So, for example, if you are experiencing limitation in some form or another, it's very important that you identify the belief system that is attracting that to you. And one of the things that I have done, and I found it to be extremely helpful, is to begin to write down, for example, if it's, it has to do with limitation, if you are at this moment experiencing any limitation in some form or another, just write down uh, the uh, beliefs that you are holding unconsciously that could be bringing this into your life. So I'm going to give you some examples that I actually wrote it down. One a limiting belief could be like this. My good is outside of myself and it's conditioned upon the circumstances of life and the goodwill of other people. And I need to work hard in order to attract my good to me. Now, that's a limiting belief. And it's important to write down so you can recognize them. Another limiting belief could be this. I am getting old, therefore I am experiencing limitations in my physical body because of aging. That's another limited belief. So my invitation for you is that you bring awareness to what is running your life. Uh, and you can do that just by writing them down and begin to bring awareness to it. And on a different sheet of paper, 
you can begin to write down new beliefs that can neutralize those old beliefs. So for example, in, in regards to the feeling that my good is outside of myself, it's totally dependent on the circumstances of life which I have no control with, uh, you can write it down that uh, because of my oneness with God, my good right now is fully established within myself, just waiting my recognition. See, it's a completely different belief concerning the physical body. Like you think I am getting old and I am experiencing physically, physical limitations. You can write a belief that says, um, I am not my physical body. I am a spiritual being, perfect and eternal right here and right now. So go on and on with each belief that you, with each limiting belief that you have written down, find uh, a neutralizing belief that you can substitute it for. Our beliefs are formed with the, with the, when we repeat a thought again and again, this thought begins to, begins to crystallize and turn into belief. So once you identify the belief, you have to begin to notice what kind of thinking is fueling, fueling this belief. And once that thought is presented to you, a limited thought, a thought of unworthiness, I'm not good enough, I don't have what it takes. When such limiting thoughts are presented to you, to feel the false belief, you have the power and the capacity to choose not to embrace it. And when you stop embracing those thoughts that fuel such beliefs, those beliefs will little by little begin to dissolve themselves. The second point that I would like to make, which is just important, is this. When you're faced with the challenge, when you're faced with the difficulty, recognize that the problem is not in the challenge itself or the difficulty, but in the way that you are seeing it and the way that you are reacting to it. See, two people can be experiencing the same event, but they will see it differently and they will react to it differently. And according to the way you see it, and according to the way you react to it, you will experience your future. So one of the things that I do that I find really extremely helpful when I'm faced with the challenge is to, when something happens that trigger buttons within myself, the first thing that I do is I close my eyes to the event and I try to go back into meditation and tap into a state of inner peace in the face of that challenge. And what I've noticed is that when I'm able to tap into an inner peace in the face of the challenge, not only am I going to be able to see the challenge without uh, coloring it with negative emotions, but I receive the guidance that I need to move out of that challenge. I also realize that Tapping into a state of peace when you're faced with a challenge is not easy unless you begin to practice tapping into that state of peace on a regular basis. So as part of my spiritual practice that I do on a daily basis, I try to sit a couple of times a day for two or three minutes and just to experience a full body relaxation a quieting of my mind so that, so that I can tap into that state of peace and become more and more familiar with it. And what I've noticed is that the more familiar I become with that state of inner peace, the easier it is for me to tap into it when I'm faced with the challenge. And what I've noticed is that as I begin to change my reaction to those challenging events in my life, I notice that little by little, they begin to harmonize on their own. One of the things that I notice that people have a very difficult time with the law of attraction 
is that there is a lag in time once we begin to make those changes within ourselves for us to see the result in real time. And I'm going to give you an illustration here to help you uh, see the reason why. Let's say that I'm taking a hot shower and then I go into the shower handle and I turn from hot to cold. And you're going to notice that the water is not going to get cold right away. It's going to take about five, six, or seven seconds from the water to go from uh, hot to cold. In the same way, when we begin to implement those inner changes as the way we react to the universe and what kinds of vibrations we are sending out, we may not see the result right away. But if we persist with the practice, you're going to see your life beginning to become more and more harmonious. So the invitation here is for you not to try to be positive for a week, but for you to try to implement those changes as a way of life. And when you do, little by little, you will begin to claim the dominion that has been given unto you and become the co-creator of your life and of your future. To raise your vibration A positive creation